Yeah. I'm talking with my old acquaintances, Roel Pieper, who is somewhere in an airport going to somewhere to another airport. And Roel, you called me because I'm organizing this blockchain innovation conference, uh, June the 7th, and you said, there is something missing in the program. Now I have about 50 different speakers in all a day. So what am I missing in my program, uh, Roel? <laughs> It, it was not necessarily that you're missing something in the program. I think in general, uh, yes, it's missing in the program, but there is a there is a piece missing in the in the overall, let's say, strategy and approach to to the blockchain application people. And l let me try to phrase it in a simple way: that uh, if if you if you're a company and you would like to do contracting with blockchain you like to do payment with blockchain all very good ideas you know good ideas and maybe there are solutions uh, to do that um, and you have reasons to do that using blockchain because you're interested in privacy and security and you want to make sure that there's no uh, German security services listening or Chinese or American people trying to interfere with your American business. Americans would never do that. American security no. service would never listen. Certainly no. also not the Dutch. The Dutch would never do that also. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But l let me just assume that you are worried about that. Yeah. And so uh, you make the investment for, for blockchain applications of various kinds. And then you make the very strange move and you switch back to WhatsApp or Viber or Telegram. And, and that is a complete oxymoron. Because you've, you've just, you know, gone back 180 degrees on your premise of security and privacy because you've now opened the door again. So it doesn't make any sense to do blockchain if you not understand how to do secure messaging. Okay, but, but, but Ru, WhatsApp and Facebook promised us that it was secure point-to-point uh, -point and that they didn't even have the keys. They couldn't even listen. They certainly couldn't give it to, uh, to the government. Uh, so it's, it's supposed to be totally secure. And Telegram really went into overdrive to prove that. You, you don't think that's true? I, I think all of them are lying 100%. Um, uh, for one simple reason, because I know that, uh, uh, especially if you're a United States-based uh, software company, um, and or you have been certified as a, a um, you know, US, US distributor, um, you have to provide something called a, a legal intercept. Uh, legal intercept is a is a requirement that you must have, and uh, we all know that these so-called legal intercept are used for all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, otherwise Julian Assange would now not be in trouble <coughs> with the United States because he was supposedly doing something wrong as a journalist. And uh -huh. so it's very easy to see that uh, a, a legal intercept argument will be misused to. Uh, achieve certain goals and therefore I do not believe the people at uh, Facebook at all um, I also do not believe uh, that the people at uh, Facebook for the following reason uh, they have announced that they will intend to merge the messenger and the whatsapp uh, systems uh -huh. well technically that's impossible if you don't have the keys mm -hmm. it's not possible mm -hmm. so I mean they're completely lying um, and I think they have the keys and so, yes, your message, your message from A to B, from your, from you to A, from me to you, is nicely encrypted, and that makes it indeed somewhat more difficult to understand it if you're a third party. Mm -hmm. But if you're Facebook or WhatsApp, you certainly have the keys, and you know exactly what's happening. Okay, so you think that all the standards, uh, the standard uh, communication tools, are uh, being listened to, and it can either be by hackers or by government, and you think there is a need for a secure communication uh, system and Google, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, those are not the companies to provide it in your eyes. Well, it's, it's interesting to note that Microsoft actually has started to move a little bit into the direction where I am going or where I am already. And they're starting to talk about doing the ID and the security uh, on the basis of blockchain. So there's some, you know, ID management discussion happening on the basis of blockchain. At least from a strategy point of view, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. If you do applications on blockchain, you should do your ID management also on blockchain. Yeah, it's no sense. Do not do that. Yeah, I want to 
Can you put it backwards a little bit because I, I, I don't see your mouth. So that would be perfect. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. It's not Good. easy here. <laughs> I understand. What is the solution which you're working on? I think the solution is that you, you use all the capabilities and the network capabilities from the blockchain, uh, let's say, algorithms and the blockchain underlying uh, server networks, and you essentially provide a messenger, a voice text, a, a calling, a document management messenger, a broad you know, communication platform like there are, and you enable that only through blockchain. Nothing, any, anything else. No, no private servers, no common servers, no servers in a rock or in a mountain. Just using the blockchain architecture. It's safe. It's secure. You don't need your own computer centers. You just run on top of the blockchain network. Stop. Okay. But as far as I understood, um, blockchains, which are nowadays uh, being uh, created, um, have extremely small block sizes. They cannot store anything. If they can store nothing. So they're absolutely, and they're not instant. They are not. They, they are not used for live uh, communication. So how can you build? On what kind of blockchain do you have in mind to build any kind of uh, live communication platform? Yeah. So very good question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thought about it. Yeah. I just. <laughs> <laughs> very good I'm question. sure I'm not the first one to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have uh, about six different patents that allow us to do very fast uh, communication on top of the blockchain network. We have some very interesting new algorithms to be able to move fast. So I agree that if you go with the standard capabilities on blockchain, it will be very difficult. So you need to improve uh, how you you know locate data, how you move data, uh, how you agree between two parties, how to communicate. So I agree, that's a challenge. But I think that's a technical challenge that we have solved. Um, so and which, now, so now, which blockchain do you use as a basis or for this platform? We we are agnostic. Uh, we we live, if you want, on top of the most popular uh, implementations because we, of course, as a as a messaging or communication tool, you cannot promote or enforce yet another blockchain. So you need to be able to live on the shoulders of the others. And I think we've done that. We've proven that already. Uh, but the key the key point I'm trying to make is that the the, the the blockchain application environment needs to be supported by a communication tool that doesn't force you to exit that environment and go to WhatsApp okay. or Viber or whatever. Okay. That's the key point. Okay. What, what's the name of the product? Um, we have not launched it officially, uh, but we do have a, a very interesting trademark, and the trademark is Priva. 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 Yeah. If I just like in Skipple when I use my uh, um, my, my eye tracking, uh, my my eye identification tool, isn't that called also Priva? No, it's called Previum, but uh, Priva is the is the, the trademark that we have. Priva, okay, Priva.com or something like that, or uh... just a brand name, and uh, we have not uh, launched the software distribution site. We've not launched how the software can be downloaded. Okay. So when can we expect uh, that you will get out of the open and uh, demonstrate? Uh, you say you already proven that it works. I don't know who to who you have proven it or where we can uh, take a look at uh, that uh, this Priva product. Well, we I think it it'll probably be within two or three months that we can have like a, a small uh, beta test or alpha test type uh, user group. Um, I would say two or three months, then then we're ready to do so. We are still testing some of the latency issues. Um, and some of the encryption uh, capabilities. Well, uh, two or three months. Okay. At the end of the year, can we expect the product to come, you know, out in the open? Apart from the the, the very private uh, alpha test, is at the end of the year or beginning of next year? No, it'll be it'll be after the summer. Yeah. My guess is it'll be after the summer. Uh, we are trying to launch it in in uh, let's say, you know, how do I say it nicely? In, 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 in le less, less obvious countries like Eastern Europe, uh, where the demand for this is uh, much higher, uh, we're probably not going to launch it for a while in the United States, and we will, you know, we, we will go east from uh, from Europe. Okay, um, fine. We'll work. We'll wait for it. It's really interesting that you do something which is normally considered impossible, but that's always you love to do impossible things. 
what is in general <laughs> your impression of the blockchain as a technology? Where do you think it will first be useful in business, in corporate, in security? I mean, where in finance? Where do you think? Uh, how do you look at technology from and that you know somebody who's always built companies from uh, from a technology point of view? It's again a good question. Um, I think the blockchain world is quite chaotic at the moment. Um, um, maybe resembling uh, where the Unix industry was at the late uh, 90s to mid 90s. Um, the, um, if you remember in the in the late uh, the late 90s to mid 90s, there were like you know 222 different versions of Unix. There were you know 22 different companies trying to standardize it. It was a complete chaos. Uh huh. And and it required a standardization effort so that you could lead, uh, you know, open systems that you would have standards and with organizations like XOpen and, and, and other uh, solutions, you were actually able to get a compatible Unix application working across different manufacturers. Yeah. And you see the same chaos now in, in the blockchain environment. And, okay. um, you know, I'm too old to do this again. No, okay. uh, or, but there's or, chaos, I'm, and there's chaos, and there is uh, there needs to be standards. But what is the what 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 do you see as the importance of blockchain in all these different? You know, if we talk about big data and artificial intelligence and everything, how important and Linux well, I, and open source? How do you, how important do you think this blockchain uh, development is for for business and for industry and for governments? Well, I, I think a lot of countries now in the world are getting so worried that their data and their applications are simply not secure. And they will have to look for a solution. So I look at it very much from a privacy, integrity, uh, security point of view. It makes no sense to be, you know, a company operating in, uh, in, in Russia, in India, in China, to then go off and buy Oracle and Amazon and Google. It's just complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. Because you're storing all your company data and your application data in the United States, I mean, how stupid can you be? I think even the uh, the Russian government wants everything to be locally stored, right? They they say everything uh, with Russian companies French, and Russian the civil. French, yeah. The French government just launched an initiative that says, you know, the the French government employees are not allowed to use an American uh, messaging system. No WhatsApp, no Viber, no Telegram, no nothing. It has to be a French organized French data stored French security solution. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that that's a great idea, but it shows you the problem. Uh -huh. It shows you where people are. Yeah. So in terms of security and in terms of uh, privacy, uh, blockchain has a role. Uh, what about working together in an, uh, in a way in a, in a less trustful that you, if you if you have a way to organize a network where trust is maybe need a, not 100% and you still can work together and the use of the blockchain as a way to do transactions. Yeah, I think if you make the effort to go and do smart contracting, payments, logistics, uh, general ledger, etc., um, and you make it as a company and you make a commitment to use, you know, a, a shared blockchain application between uh, uh, either the same type of companies or the same type of companies across borders, uh, I think you, you must continue your thinking and say, well, we must do messaging and data transfer the same way. Mm -hmm. it, it cannot be you then switch to a United States uh, uh, piece of software. It's just absurd. Okay, wonderful. Rule, thank you very much for letting me interview you. And I mean, we are on June the 7th, we're especially talking about uh, things which are in production, you know, all kinds of cases like billions of dollars of oil of the North Sea, which are being settled on the blockchain or cars, which are identity. Very. But your stuff it sounds really interesting. And I'm really going to see how you I, I pull that off. They don't, I hope they don't send the contract by WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will immediately uh, make a good deal with you, my man. And no problem. We will do with WhatsApp very secure. Now, we use Telegram in, uh, in Russia. But anyway, it's interesting that you, where, where you live now, you live in Kiev, right? Ukraine, yep. Ukraine. So you are also formed by the environment you're in. I mean, it's totally different uh, kinds of needs which are happening here. So it's interesting to see that you use the blockchain for uh, from the perspective where you are now. We're, next yep. year, next 